Hello, my name is Rick Pack, and this presentation is R Community Explorer, the state of R. The master developer of all this work by far is Ben C. Uba, who I will now call Ben Uba. Also involved were Meet Bhatnagar and Anani Sharma. The R Community Explorer is a data-driven exploration of the R community that looks at global activities with a focus on groups, events, software, Q&A through an analysis of the Stack Overflow website, Google Summer of Code, Twitter, and rankings of the R language relative to other languages. You can look at the R Community Explorer dashboards by using the link on the right of this slide. So why was the R Community Explorer created? It helps users find user groups, events, popular tools, and trends in the R data science space. It provides a data-driven tool to aid organizations in planning events and diversity programs. It helps track underrepresented regions with respect to user groups, members, and events. It provides a way to monitor the growth and popularity of the R language across time. And it helps to recognize the efforts of organizers, mentors, community leaders, developers, and other volunteers across user groups, events, and other open source programs. The expected audience of this presentation and the R Community Explorer include support organizations like the R Foundation and R Consortium, diversity focused groups like R Forwards and R Ladies, and for profit organizations that provide R related products and services. We also are looking at user groups and event organizers, users and developers, including those who develop R packages, R enthusiasts and evangelists, prospective users and organizations who are considering the adoption of R, and those speculators and writers who think R is declining, unlike the evangelists. In fact, when we look at the data, we see a, an increasing number of R user groups in the bottom left line chart. What we are showing in this presentation are data collected mostly through the meetup.com API, often using the R Ladies Meetup R package. Along with seeing growth in groups across time at the bottom left, we see on the right the global spread of R user groups with a prominent representation in North America and Western Europe, and an underrepresentation in areas including the continent of Africa and South America. Still, we see global presence and over 900 user groups. Our Ladies also has a global presence. Our Ladies represent a tremendous asset to the R community, and we want to thank founders, including Claudia Vitolo, who collaborated with Ben Uba and myself on the excuse me, Google Summer of Code project in 2019, our Community Explorer. There are almost 200 chapters worldwide. The line graph on the left shows sustained growth, and we mentioned the global representation on the right with more chapters in Latin America than might be expected. In fact, we see that more clearly in these bar charts. On the left, when we look at our user groups, Notice Latin America around the center and the relatively greater height that it has for Our Lady's chapters on the right. Asia appears to be underrepresented with respect to Our Lady's chapters relative to other regions uh, and, and continents. So we all might learn from Latin America. Here, this shows the same data, these pie charts in a different way. The pie chart on the left shows Latin America with a smaller slice than what we see in the Our Ladies membership on the right. When we look worldwide, excuse me, at meetup events, we see sustained growth over the years from 2012 to 2019 with about 20% of growth of, of events as presented on meetup.com relative to, to 2018, 20% growth. 
uh, over 7,500 events have been conducted over those eight years. Again, looking at events on meetup.com, we see that there's a drop in activity in the summer months, perhaps because of vacations and that popular event, Musar. Also, we see a drop during the winter months. 30% of all our meetup events have been organized in the top 20 cities worldwide. Number one is Taipei, Taiwan, with 420 events, more than double what we see for number two, New York City in the, in the United States, West Des Moines, Iowa, number three in the western part of the United States, Portland, Oregon, number four, and then Dublin, Ireland, number five. The top 20 cities had even more, 40 plus percent of, yes, RSVPs. These are the number, of the number of individuals aggregated across events who indicated that they would attend an event, uh, a particular event, a yes, RSVP. Taipei, Taiwan, sorry that the number is cut off, but more than 19,700 yes, RSVPs Number two, New York City. Number three, Washington, D.C. Number four, Chicago, Illinois, in the Midwest portion of the United States. And number five, Melbourne, Australia. Many speakers will probably reference COVID-19, and we will do so briefly. We just noticed that on the left, meetup events, and on the right, yes, RSVPs dropped as concerns about COVID rose around February and then as of late have risen as organizers have discovered how popular online events are that concern are. Our ladies events also show growth, over 1,800 events, but most importantly perhaps, growth across time year over year, especially since 2016 when there were only 40 Our Ladies events in 2019, there were more than 850, as shown in the bar chart at the bottom left. The top right bar chart shows meetup event counts also growing uh, with a similar pattern as we saw earlier, a drop in the winter months. Forgive me, that, that's not referencing growth, that shows monthly counts. And then at the bottom, we see across all events, also the monthly count. So we see a similar pattern between Our Ladies events across months and all our events. Saturday has been a huge contributor to the R community and so let's look at what's been happening with those events. We see we're just getting started when we focus on the bottom right. Growth went from just a single event in 2016 and 2017 to, as the bar chart shows, six events in 2018 and then nine in 2019. Also interesting is Europe was number one, but number two is Africa, which has not ranked so well relative to other regions slash continents in prior slides. CRAN, of course, is the preeminent repository for downloading both base R and R packages. And we see that downloads have really grown across time, especially base R in 2019 and our packages on in the right bar chart. Over 2 billion, in fact, let's say the number, 2,616,078,617 R package downloads have taken place from the CRAN repository, a huge number. Bioconductor also shows growth across time. From 2009 through 2019, we see sustained and even increasing growth of downloads of Bioconductor hosted packages. Over 127 million and a half downloads have taken place from the Bioconductor repository. To my knowledge, Rick Pack, there has not been much research into our packages or actually our repositories more generally hosted on GitHub. Ben has found almost 90,000 in 2019 repositories hosted on GitHub. So this is a ripe area for analysis. We see again growth across the years in the right bar chart. And on the left, I'll read off the top five most starred, that means most 
favored or most um, these are we we provide a star for our GitHub repository GitHub repository when we want to communicate appreciation to the creator of that work or creators and the one the number one most star GitHub repository that's R related is ggplot2 then number two awesome hyphen R number three shiny number four ml for hackers and number five dplyr we can analyze R related Q&A on the Stack Overflow website using the dashboards. There's actually been a decrease of page views, which Ben and I wonder could mean that individuals are returning to Stack Overflow less as they learn the techniques that they previously had to repeatedly be reminded of on Stack Overflow. There's been general growth across time, but um, a more stable pattern is seen in the right line chart, particularly for questions and answers. The I'm sorry, uh, yes, questions and answers, the red and blue bar, and then a uh, line. And then that top line, the green line for comments, shows more growth, which could mean that while individuals are returning to the Stack Overflow page less, our developers are finding opportunities to communicate through comments on previous questions and answers, new ways of thinking about things given growth of our packages and new functions in even the same packages. I mentioned earlier, Claudia Vitolo, one of the Our Ladies founders, worked with Ben Uba and myself on the Google Summer of Code 2019 project, Our Community Explorer, which featured dashboards that are now appearing in this presentation and have actually been augmented by Ben. Google Summer of Code has contributed $117,500 to the R project. And with an average student participation of 18 and mentor participation of almost 38 members across the years, we see this is a popular way for individuals to collaborate on new work in R. Ben has found over 600 and I'm sorry, over uh, almost 250 special R Twitter accounts. These are hosted by organizations, uh, they're bots, and not individual users, but instead entities that are committed to helping to educate about R. Number one is R Studio, as we see in the bar chart on the bottom left, among most followed non-personal R-centered Twitter accounts. Number one, R-Studio. Number two, R-Bloggers. Number three, R-Lang Tip. Number four, R-Studio Tips. And number five, R-OpenSci. You can find these non-personal R-centered Twitter accounts on Twitter by preceding any of what you see here with an at symbol. And you could probably Google the same. All of these are listed in the CSV linked at the top of this slide. These non-personal non R-centered Twitter accounts include a noteworthy one given this presentation, use R 2020 STL. R is a popular language when we look at its ranking relative to other languages, with its best ranking being number five according to the IEEE. So in summary, the data have shown that R remains popular. Is R declining? The data say no. R is not only popular, but it's becoming more popular. We want to thank our sponsor, Jumping Rivers, and invite you to help us build an automated, data-driven website that covers all that you have seen here and much more. You can find ways to help by clicking the link at the very bottom. And given the current conversation, we want to highlight that this is a community project developed by a black community member, Ben Uba, who is in Nigeria. So please consider supporting the R Community Explorer. On behalf of Ben Uba, Meet Bhatnagar, and Anani Sharma, my name is Rick Pack, and we thank you for experiencing our presentation concerning the state of R our Community Explorer.